So I have a dilemma. My dilemma is that I want to make really good furniture, but I have basically no experience as a furniture designer. Currently, I work full time as a furniture maker in someone else's shop. So from 9 to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, I'm making custom pieces for my boss's business and I'm grateful for that. I've learned so much doing that, but I'm essentially just fabricating somebody else's designs. And so coming up with my own designs and taking into consideration things like aesthetic, style, wood species, wood movement, and budget is a really new challenge for me. And I definitely stumble along the way. And because I work a nine to five job, I'm not about to enroll in furniture design school. So I'm just gonna keep making these videos and pray that it improves my design abilities along the way. It should, right? <laughs> so in my last video, I made a piece on spec for Houseplant, Seth Rogen's cannabis company. And this video is gonna be a little bit different, but also in a similar vein, in that I'm going to make a piece on spec that would fit in Van Nystad's workshop. If you don't know, Van is a filmmaker slash handyman who started a YouTube channel about two years ago called The Spirited Man. Van really inspires me as a filmmaker, but also just as a maker. His videos are meaty, unique, funny, and artistic among other wonderful things that I could say about them. One of my favorite videos that Van made is called The Rules of Gifting. The best gifts are nice, made, and thoughtful, but any two will be a good gift. And that's the holy trinity. That's the best a gift can get. So anyway, I'm going to try and give Van a gift. As every good maker should, Van has a plethora of tools and gadgets that he carefully organizes and takes care of. And for that reason, I've decided to make him a tool chest. And as tradition goes, he has no idea that I'm making this. As I'm beginning to daydream about what this thing is gonna look like, I'm becoming heavily influenced by the US general tool chest that you see in a lot of shops and garages. I wanna make something similar and robust like that, but something that doesn't share the same footprint. And of course, it'll be made out of wood. My plan is to make something a little bit smaller that can fit on top of a bench top or be tucked away somewhere. I'm also gonna go with this five drawer construction. The challenge at this point is deciding what type of wood to use that would suit, best suit, and also excite Van. It doesn't have to excite him. It just best suit him. Suits, suit him. Okay, I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm deciding to use either Riffs on White Oak or straight grain Douglas fir for the toolbox. And the reason for that is because basically everything that Van Nystat makes on his channel is out of some sort of softwood and usually Douglas fir. Uh, and so I kind of want to pay homage to that and make the piece out of a straight grain Doug fir because I think it'll look nice, but it's just not going to hold up to any sort of abuse or use really. And so that's what's making me lean towards using like a riff sawn white oak. I really don't know what I'm going to choose. It's tough. In the end, I just don't think straight grain Doug fir is going to be a good choice for a tool chest. So I'm going to go with the riffs on white oak. It's a lot more expensive, but it's a more desirable cut from the log that gives the wood a straighter grain configuration as opposed to the typical cathedrals that you see in plain sawn white oak. So I got started on the milling process and took all of my pieces down to 13 16 before gluing up the sides. This way I can just run them through the planer afterwards and get them down to their final thickness of three quarter inch. Getting the body glued up was pretty straightforward just using some floating tenons with the domino. I 
I did have a difficult time choosing between side mount drawer slides, like the ones that are found on the US General tool chest, or wooden drawer slides. The wooden slides are a little bit more difficult to get a satisfying fit, but overall have a more refined look and feel than just side mount metal drawer slides. In the end, I ditched the side mount and just went with the wooden drawer slides. And the first step in making drawer slides is making the drawers. I'm using hard maple for the drawers since typically most drawer boxes are constructed from maple even if the carcass is made from another wood species. Once I decided on a dimension for the slides, I got going on the dados for the drawer boxes. These dados are gonna run all the way through the boxes with the drawer faces acting as a stop once they're applied. The next step is to mill up my strips to be the right fit within the dado of the drawer. These are later gonna be the sole mechanism for the sliding drawer and it's important that the fit is snug but not so tight that it binds or racks. Once oil and wax are applied in the finishing process, the drawer will slide nicely. By far, the biggest problem I've been having with this project is deciding on what drawer pulls to use. Up until this point, I've had it in my head that I was gonna be using brass drawer pulls and I thought that they would look really nice with the riffs on white oak, especially an oiled white oak. But I've done like hours and hours of looking online for different types of brass, brushed brass, aged brass, antiqued brass, and <laughs> and they're all bad. That being said, one of the best parts of my job is that I have a boss and coworkers that I can use as resources, and so that's exactly what I did. I asked my boss, Eric, um, if he had any ideas for a solution for a drawer pull or if he even knew of any pulls that I could use, and he came up with this genius idea that I wound up using, and I think it just fits so well. It really ties the piece together, and I think it totally works with the, with the aesthetic that I was going for. I ended up making these drawer pulls on the router table using a bullnose bit. You run it once flat, and then a second time on edge, and you get this beautiful little detail here. And then I just cut them down to size and glued them to the drawer faces that I had already hung on the drawer box. Normally, you would do this process uh, the other way, but it worked out fine and I got the reveals to be pretty close to what I was hoping for. And then to top it all off, I made some quarter inch feet to protect the bottom just out of the spalted white oak scraps that I had laying around and I think those came out great. Dating or monogramming the gift gives the gift extra power. And so here it is. So, of course, Van has no idea that I made this for him. So in the meantime, it'll just sit in my shop until he, you know, finds out about it or wants to come pick it up. And that is taking into consideration that he even likes it and would want to come pick it up. I really feel like when I have a specific challenge to make a video or to work on something in the shop, it, it really narrows my creativity in an awesome way. And that's what these challenges that I do here are. And I really hope that you guys enjoy them and learn from them, um, because I certainly do. In the meantime, I will keep daydreaming about what my next project might be. Uh, I really like to design within these strict parameters. I think it's fun to play within specific guidelines, and I think it helps me become a better designer. But I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, you can do whatever you like.